Hello people and welcome to my channel. I use Virtual Desktop to play all my PC VR games wirelessly on my Pico 4 and MetaQuest 2 headsets and I'm going to show you how in three easy steps. Just for clarification, this setup process also works for the original Quest, brand new Quest Pro, which I couldn't afford to buy, sad face, and the Pico Neo 3 Link. The setup process is identical on all headsets, but I will be demonstrating using my brand new Pico 4. Is that clear? Great. Well, let's get straight into it then, and remember, we're born to respawn. Virtual Desktop is an amazing app that allows you to play all your PC VR titles wirelessly on your Quest, Quest 2, Quest Pro, Pico Neo 3 Link, and the brand new Pico 4. So, if you've ever fancied going completely wireless for the incredible Half-Life Alex or a really sweaty session of contractors without worrying about getting tangled up in any wires, this is the app for you. I'm going to show you how to set up Virtual Desktop on your headset in three easy steps. Once that is done, I'm going to show you my personal settings that I have honed over the past two years to optimize performance and reduce latency. Then I will talk about the five most common problems and how to overcome them with a few cheeky tips and tricks thrown in for good measure. You will need a VR ready PC to run virtual desktop. So stay till the end of the video where I will tell you how to ensure your PC is up to the task. Excited? I know I am. So let's get into it. Step one, open up the store in your headset and search for virtual desktop. Buy the app, then install it. Just for reference, you need to purchase the app on your headset as that is the only version to allow wireless game streaming. Step two, go to the virtual desktop website, download and install the stream app. This creates a virtual server that fools your headset into thinking it is connected to your PC to allow you to play all your VR content wirelessly. It's all very clever stuff. Click on the accounts tab and enter your meta or Pico username here. Then click the options tab and make sure all the boxes are ticked, except encrypt local traffic and lock computer on disconnect. It is especially important that you automatically adjust bitrate tab is checked. I'll tell you why a bit later. On the preferred codec tab, you have two options. H.264 will lower latency but reduce graphical fidelity and HEVC may increase latency slightly but improve your graphical fidelity. I use HEVC because I'm a graphics tart, but this setting is entirely up to you. Lower latency or improved graphics, it's your choice. Quickly click the About tab and check for interfering apps, just to make sure nothing is going to spoil your wireless experience. Step three, go to the Meta Store and download the Oculus app on your PC. Yes, it's still called the Oculus app. This is a 12 gig download, so go make a cup of tea and wait for it to download. Tip number one, if you have a Pico headset and don't own any Meta Oculus PC VR titles, you can completely miss this third step out. Pico headsets do not require the Oculus Meta software to run Steam VR titles, which makes everything much more streamlined for that ecosystem. And that's it. You are now ready to stream all your PC VR titles wirelessly on your Quest, Quest 2, Quest Pro, Pico Neo 3 Link, and Pico 4. How easy was that? Moving on, I'm going to show you my virtual desktop settings to optimize your wireless performance, but please bear in mind these are my settings and your PC specs may vary wildly from what I have. My PC is mid-level. It has an i9-9900K F CPU, an RTX 2080 Ti GPU, and 32 gigs of RAM. Pop on your headset and start up the virtual desktop app. Press the left menu button on your controller to bring up the menu. Here, you will see the PC you are connected to, the different environments you can choose from, all your PC VR games, controller input, settings, streaming tab, and finally, any video content you have on your PC. First thing to do is click the settings tab and uncheck the use optimal resolution box. It is a recommended setting, but will change the resolution of your monitor or monitors and kept messing up my OBS settings. Tip two, if you have multiple monitors, you can skip between them by pressing the Y button on your left controller. Now, open the streaming tab. I know it looks daunting at first, but it is pretty straightforward once you know what's what. VR graphics quality. Choose the setting nearest to your GPU spec. A recent update has added Ultra for all you lucky Nvidia 3000 owners and a godlike setting for all you rich 4000 series owners who have a Quest Pro or Pico 4 with the high resolution panels. VR frame rate, bang it up to 90 frames per second. VR bitrate, 
Remember I asked you to make sure that the automatically adjust bitrate tab was checked in the Stream app? Virtual Desktop will work out your optimum bitrate for you, so just pump this setting up to the max. Sharpening, leave this at 75%. Gamma, again, leave this as it is. Synchronous Space Warp. SSW is a VR frame rate smoothing technique that would need a whole video just to explain. So let's leave this on automatic for the time being. Advanced options, sliced encoding on, all the others off. You can fiddle with these settings at your leisure, but be aware that ticking video buffering will get rid of any micro stutters, but add latency, just so you're aware. The final tab is the performance overlay. Ticking this will give you a real-time performance overlay of the stress on your GPU and CPU, plus give you a good indication of where your latency bottleneck may be. This is a great tool to diagnose any problems, so keep this in mind if you are having streaming issues. Okay, you are now all set up. Your stream should be flawless, so you can now dive into some PC VR games. I'm demonstrating Red Matter 2 on the Meta PC VR store because it is one of the most gorgeous games in VR. So when the frame rate drops to yellow, Synchronous Space Warp is keeping the headset at 90 frames per second, and we have 35 milliseconds of latency. That's okay. This will give you a pretty flawless wireless PC VR experience so that you can enjoy the amazing graphics of this outstanding game. Tip number four, to ensure perfect wireless performance, your PC should be connected to your router by an ethernet cable, preferably Cat 5E or higher, and your headset must be connected to your router's five gigahertz channel. No ifs or buts, if you don't follow these guidelines, you will not have a pleasant experience. Before we move on to my five most common virtual desktop problems, I have opened up channel membership, so if this video helps you in any way, please consider clicking the join button. You'll get access to custom emojis, channel loyalty badges, members exclusive giveaways, and you will help sponsor more content like this. Thanks. The five most common virtual desktop issues. Number one, my internet is slow. This may surprise you, but virtual desktop is not interested in the speed of your internet. Surprise? It is only interested in the strength of your Wi-Fi signal. So open the menu on your headset and look in the top left corner. This will show your five gigahertz Wi-Fi channel strength. Anything above 500 megabits per second should be fine. Two, choppy performance. Make sure your PC is connected to your router via a good quality ethernet cable and your headset is connected to the five gigahertz channel. Click the check for interfering apps on the about tab of the stream app on your PC. It may be a firewall or third party app causing problems. Three, cannot connect to PC. Make sure the streamer app is running on your PC and that the correct meta or Pico username is displayed. Four, left hanging in a black screen. Do you have another VR headset connected to your PC? Disconnected. If you're using a meta headset, do you have the Oculus app installed on your PC? And my final problem, number five, cannot download or run the virtual desktop streamer app. It's your antivirus software, guaranteed. Turn that shit off and have faith in Windows Defender. It's all you need. And that's it. Virtual desktop in three easy steps on your Quest, Quest 2, Quest Pro, Pico Neo 3 Link or Pico 4, plus a few tips and tricks to help you on your way. If you have any problems, join my Discord and navigate to the virtual desktop frequently asked questions or post up in the helpline. I'm usually about somewhere or if I'm drunk or asleep or both, one of my Discord chums may be able to help you out. Please remember, I have opened up channel membership, so if this video helps you in any way, would you consider clicking the join button? Thank you. My final tip of the day, if you are unsure if your PC is VR ready, go to Steam and download the Steam VR performance app and then run it. This will tell you if your PC is strong enough to run VR and what kind of performance you can expect. As you can see, my PC is running an i9-9900KF, an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti and 32 gig of RAM, and it got the green light. How did your PC perform? Do you need a few choice upgrades or did you get the green light? You know the drill? Get involved and comment down below. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the other side.